Welcome everyone. Glad you're here today. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Father, we thank you so much again for allowing us to come into this house of worship. We thank you that you love us so much that you sent us Jesus to pay for our sins. And Father, uh, we would ask that you would send your Holy Spirit. That we want to... Uh, we want to be filled, that we would know which way to go, that we would know how to treat each other. And Lord, we want to be used by you to teach others about Jesus. And it's in his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, I was watching uh, something on the internet, and there are some good things on the internet. Not, they're not all bad. And it, it really touched me deep, so I shared it with, with, uh, with folks. And, it was uh, the uh, it was people who could hear for the very first time in their life. I don't know if any of y'all seen that that video, but they they haven't heard, and when they could hear, their hearing made them just burst with uh, I don't know I don't have a good enough word for it, but they cried. It was that spectacular for them to hear the first time. Even little babies who heard their mother's voices for the first time, they cried. And they also showed an episode of um, people that could see for the first time. And well, I, I guess they could see, but their, their vision was blurry. But they saw like their husband or their wife or their mother or their father for the first time. And they just burst into tears. You can imagine the, the joy of not seeing someone, and all of a sudden, you could just that quick. I mean, the baby, the, one of the babies was fighting to put the glasses on, but when the glasses got on, it was like looking around, and then the smile. This baby would just just melt you when you watched the smile on his face. It, it was incredible. Anyway, the, this uh, Christian record for the blind, uh, I mean, if, it is one of the greatest things you could d donate your money to. If, you have, if, you, if you're looking to donate, this is the place to, to donate. Also, there's another place called uh, Child Impact. They, uh, they, they help children in other countries. I believe they help children in the United States, too, that, that don't have parents, that are orphans, that, that they're taking them and they're using them for you know, corrupt things in this world and th this organization is, is is saving these children and it's incredible I sponsored a girl for years and years and years I haven't heard from her in a long time but she would send me letters every now and then and shame on me I didn't keep up with her too good but I, you know I, I donate to this organization called Child Impact and and if you got a little extra money uh, look up that organization it's an Adventist organization and uh, there's other organizations out there like ADRA. ADRA is uh, one of the greatest organizations also. It's run by volunteers. They don't, the money does, very little of the money goes for, uh, uh, what do you call that? Administration. Administration. Thank you. Pray that my words come to me easier than that. <laughs> I, uh, I, Let's see, I got it right here. I hope it comes right up. I don't want y'all to have to wait for me to find it. It's not there. Anyway, this is this is the dead space that some people don't like. <laughs> Oh, it's got to come up. Keep talking. Anyway, um, you know, we're here for such a time as this. And uh, I think I found it. Yeah, this is the one I found. And see if you know where this comes from. Uh, mo most of you probably do. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are endowed by the Creator with a certain alien, unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Declaration of Independence. I, I'm, a, I'm amazed 
that our world, if you believe the spirit of prophecy and you read the Bible, that our world is 6,000 years old. That in all that time, that there's only been one country that I know of, maybe some of you know some other countries, that have had the freedoms that the United States have had. And, and, and we, I mean, you, you look at that and you see how God has moved in this world. Why did God wait for the last 200 and so, or so years uh, to bring the United States in, in it, it, it is, I'm blown away by that, that we have, that we are born in the, in this country with all these freedoms and we can worship pretty much right now, however we want to. It's an incredible thought. Um, I believe that God is, is, it brought this country into existence, of course, to, to evangelize the world. Because why did they come over from England? From my understanding, they came uh, from England for uh, more than, probably more than one reason, but a lot of people came for religious liberty. And how, what this country was in uh, those years, starting in 1776 or thereabouts, and, and what our country is today are, is two different, uh, it's like two different countries. We still have our freedoms to worship. And God is, uh, is still in control. And that's a silly statement. God is always in control. As my buddy Ray always says, God's in control of everything or He's in control of nothing. So my sermon today is, the name of it is, is The Last Call. And as Mary Jane said in, when her, in her talk, she used the statement, night is coming when no one can work. There's going, to be a, there's, a, there's going to be a cutoff day. There's going to be a last call. We want to be on the right side of that last call. I want to go back to Adam and Eve. <laughs> so Adam and Eve, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Please pray for me. Adam and Eve I realize I said that three times <laughs> they were sinless let's go to uh, Romans chapter 1 yeah I hear there's an echo Marty I don't know if you can hear it but Here's an echo. Romans chapter 1. I'm, get, I'm coming back to Adam and Eve. I said it one too many times not to talk about it. And we're in verse 18. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. You cannot be unrighteous unless you're ungodly first. If you look at Adam and Eve, sinless creatures sinned. So they really didn't have any advantage over the human race. Even Adam and Eve, being sinless, sinned. So, how do we see ourselves as we truly are? If we don't know that we're sinners, how do we know 
Where do we look? How do, how do, how do we see ourselves? How do we find ourselves? As, at, how do, we, when we look at Jesus and we see how pure He is, we're talking about the man, Christ Jesus. And we reflect on Jesus, then we see just how sinful we are. And without, if we don't see how sinful we are, why would we need a Savior? The Bible tells us in John 15, 5 that we can do nothing without Jesus. Or Jesus tells us that in John 15, 5. It's the, it's the end of the verse. He says, you can do nothing without me. When Adam and Eve lived in the garden, they had complete freedom. They had a relationship with God. And they decided, with a little help from Satan, that they, that they, that God was holding something back from them. So, they became what Romans chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, They became, it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. They became, at that instance, what did they become? They became ungodly. Like Revelation, like uh, Romans chapter 1 is telling us. They became ungodly the minute or the second that, that they were wondering, well, is God telling us the truth? And that has been with us since, since it's happened. The human race fell into sin the, the, the very second, or millisecond, that, that they changed their allegiance from God-centered to self-centered, which was actually, they had given themselves slaves to Satan to obey him, which is Romans chapter 6 and verse 16 and it says there do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey you're that one slave slaves whom you obey whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness have you ever tried to change someone else <laughs> i mean really have you ever tried to change somebody else i mean in my lifetime i can tell you i was terrible I was a terrible human being when I was younger because I was always self-centered and I was always trying to change everybody around me. But I realized at the age of, I think I was 63, maybe 60, I'm 64 now, but I finally realized and it took a long time that I can't even change myself. I can, I can, you know, stick to something, you know, just grind my teeth and say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You ever done that? Well, what are you, why aren't you still doing it? Because you're, you've come from your mother and father, Adam and Eve. We choose, it says, do you not know to whom you present yourself slaves to obey? You're that one slave whom you obey. And I've been argued with about this before. And I used to argue with the guy that told me. I said, nah, you're nuts. <laughs> you can't choose whether you can do right or wrong. I said, you heard what I said. You cannot choose whether you do right or wrong. But you can choose whom you obey. It's according to who you choose to obey is whether you do right or wrong. If you choose Christ and allow Him to permeate your life, you will choose right. You know, there's a, uh, uh, in the Spirit of Prophecy, Faith and Works. That's one of the most incredible little books. You could probably read it in a day. But there's one verse in there, or excuse me, one statement in there 
that we need to pay attention to. And I don't think that everybody agrees with this statement. Not everybody agrees with the spirit of prophecy. But let me tell you, I believe in the spirit of prophecy. Amen. I believe in every word because I believe that Jesus gave Ellen White the words to write down. Amen. And, and they, some people will argue with me that it was thought inspiration. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. He gave her the words to write down because he told her, according to her, if you believe her writings, and we, we're Adventists, he said, uh, Ellen, these are not, I repeat, not your words. These are my words. And Jesus is talking to Ellen White. If you believe the spirit of prophecy, and why would she, and anyway, I don't, I don't need to go into that. <laughs> this right here, it says, and this is in their bulletin, it's under stewardship. Faith and Works, uh, page 43.2, says none have the light of truth. None who, ha none who have had the light of truth will enter the city of God as commandment breakers. <clears throat> his, laws, his law lies at the foundation of his government in earth and in heaven. If they have knowingly trampled upon and de despised his law on earth, they will not be taken to heaven to do the same work there. And this is what I want you to pay attention to. It says, there is no change of character when Christ comes. Oh, no, it, it's all right, Deborah. It's not a problem. Things happen. Never, it, you, will, you will never top the, the one with John, John Gray was preaching, our former pastor. He's walking across here, and he's, he, he, he walked across. He was always like this, walking. And he got about right about here. I remember it plain as day, and it said, everybody was kung fu fighting. He had that on his phone. That was like, whoa. <laughs> anyway, I want to read that last line again. It says, there is no change of character when Christ comes. No change. We are being prepared now. And that's why it's, it's, it, we need to be ready for that last call because night is coming. The last call is uh, we in our own selves, if you look in the spirit of prophecy, it'll tell you. And if you look in the Bible, I, the Bible is, spells it out also that, that we will never be sinless in ourselves. Never be sinless in ourselves. And that, that's kind of worrisome. <laughs> I mean, because how are we going to get to heaven? Thank you, Dennis. We have got to have Christ's robe of righteousness on us. It is His robe that I can't say that it... I don't want to say it covers our sins. His robe of righteousness that He puts on us gives us the strength to live a sinless life. And I'll, I'll tell you this, that you will never know that you're living a sinless life. And the reason is why is because you are always measuring yourself up to the great, and the Spirit of Prophecy uses that, the great plumb line is Jesus Christ. We'll always be measuring ourselves to Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll, we'll be asking, you know, did I was I what, did did I was I perfect? No, you weren't perfect, but Jesus was perfect, and He's the one that qualified to be my substitute on the cross. And as I said before, we can do nothing without Jesus. Nothing. I have some little notes here I got to look at. God's grace doesn't become a reality until you understand you are lost. And how you understand that you're lost is you behold Christ. If you remember the story two weeks ago that I was talking about Isaiah coming into the throne room 
Isaiah, I don't think you realize the holiness of God. And he comes into the throne room and he sees God and the fear, I believe it was the fear and the reverence of God made him pass out on the ground because he knew, he says, woe, woe is me. Why did he say that? Because he realized that he had sin in his life when he saw, when he saw God. And the only way that we can get to the point, to, this, to the same point that Isaiah got, is we have to see God. Jesus Christ is not going to break down the door and come into your life. He's going to knock on the door. He's knocking on that door. And all you have to do is open the door and He will come in. It is not by your strength that you can live the righteous life. It is by Jesus Christ. I can't say it any simpler than that. And, and I think I say it every time I preach. We have got to examine ourselves. And you can examine yourself and see, is Jesus in my heart? You know, I, I always wondered about Enoch because he walked with God and what did he do? He, God took him. Does Jesus mean more to you than your life itself? And let's not, let's not forget that this life is going away. And remember one other thing, that we are stewards of this vessel. God has given us a precious gift in, in each, of, each of our vessels. I mean, even the blind or the, the people that can't hear that can know Jesus, it's, it's an incredible thought because this life is like a puff of smoke. And the next life... It's going to be for eternity. This is a short pain, and, and I hate pain. We were talking about pain. So who was talking about pain a few minutes ago? Pain is is a uh, oh, what's that word? Anyway, pain is a character builder. God uses pain in our lives to build our characters, and without that character building we will not see eternity. I, I don't know of any, th any good thing on this planet, there may be some, and I'm I, I just not thinking of them, that builds our character like pain. Marriage. I'm not going to touch that one ever, anyway. I have a great marriage. So. Oh, character, not pain. <laughs> Anyway, I'm staying away from that one. <laughs> but you think about uh, the things that have happened in your life, and, and you ask God, you know, we ask God to take these, these, these uh, painful things away from us, but what we're doing is we're asking God to stop working on us. That's hard to, that's hard to think about. We, we want to... Uh, we want to be pleasing to God. But when you think about it, when you're in pain, the only thing you can do is think about that pain. But you, there's somehow in your mind, and I have been in pain for the past couple of weeks. I'm not in pain anymore, but I have been recently. And, it, and I, the only thing that I could focus on was the next Tylenol. <laughs> and, and, and you focus on, you have to focus on God. Because you can't get away from the, you, if you've been in pain that you can't escape from, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I, uh, I know I've got something else to say. I've got five more minutes. I said it already. Jesus doesn't come where He is not welcome. But you know, in Revelation 3.21, it says He's knocking on the door of our hearts. And He says, if anyone opened that door, what does it say? He says, He will come in. That is what we need.
The one thing that we're, I, I see that I've lacked in my life is uh, not lacking, but not enough of, is, is, is my petitions to God, my praying. My prayer life has changed over the past six months like it's, it's never done before. And as a result, my life has changed. And I believe that, that the more time we spend in prayer, and it, and it said that if we just, if we would just spend some time with God each morning, you start with 15 minutes, and uh, and then and then I believe if we are sincere with our prayer, it'll go to 30 minutes, and then it'll go to an hour, then it'll go to two hours. The uh, that's our relationship with God. Without the presence of God, why do we even come to worship? That is, that, that is foreign to some people. Why do we come to worship unless we have the presence of God with us? What are we worshiping if we don't have the presence of God? We need the presence of God more than we need the doctrines of God. More, doctrines are important, don't get me wrong. But we need the presence of God before we can enjoy the doctrines of God. Let's see. We need the uh, presence of God more than we need the blessings of God. That is because if you have the presence of God, God is going to bless you. Amen. If you came to church today looking for a blessing, and I don't like to say this, but you're here for the wrong reason. If you came to worship God today, you're going to get blessed. There's no two ways about it. God is everything to us. Without Him, as I said it before, we're, we, are, we are nothing. And like I said before, he, we are a, a steward of this. And one day He's going to come and see what we've done with this. And we should all be thinking about that. We should be thinking, the, is it, when, is, when is my last call? Will I be here next week? Will I be here tomorrow? Will I be here tonight? We want to be ready when Jesus comes. And we want to be ready if, it, if we have to go home before He comes. Yes. When those people went to bed in Maui on Monday night, they, they did not know that that was their last call to get Amen. to God. Amen. Very good, Deborah. Our closing song is number 192, O Shepherd Divine. Oh. 